today we are going to discuss the first event of pre fertilization that is gametogenesis now when we consider gametogenesis the name suggests gametogenesis genesis means synthesis and gameto that means gametes that means the synthesis or the formation of gamete and that process is called gametogenesis so we can say that gametogenesis is the process of formation of of gametes now when we consider gametes so gametes are of two types generally we can say that okay it is male gamete or female gamete right so the process of formation of gametes that is known as gametogenesis and here the gametes are of two distinct types that is male gamete and female gamete but when we consider in organism so in some organism these gametes okay are morphologically similar that means you cannot distinguishly <coughs> separate okay them as a male or female gamete and therefore okay we have to consider here mainly in algae gametes are are morphologically similar means you cannot separate okay distinctly and therefore okay these type of gametes which are morphologically similar are known as iso gametes or homo gametes right so in few organism like in algae the gametes are morphologically similar and therefore those gametes are known as isogametes or homo gametes but when we consider the organism which reproduce sexually most of the organism the gametes are morphologically distinct and those gametes are known as heterogametes in most of organisms who reproduce sexually gametes are morphologically distinct and those gametes which are morphologically distinct are known as heterogametes are known as heterogametes now morphologically distinct means that some gametes are small in size while in comparison in comparison to those gametes the another are large in size so when we consider this heterogamete so here the some gametes are small in size while the some are large in size in most of the organism these small sized gametes okay are considered as male gamete while the large gametes are considered as female gamete right now this male gamete are also known as in plant most of they are known as anthrozoid and in animal mainly these male gametes okay are known as sperms so the male gametes are either known as anthrozoid or sperm while female gametes are mainly known as egg cell or we can say ovum or in plural ova right so when we consider gametogenesis so gametogenesis is the process of formation of gametes and gametes are most of the of two types male gametes and female gametes in some organism these gametes are morphologically similar like in algae okay and those gametes are considered as isogametes or homogametes but but in most of the organism who reproduce sexually in those the gametes are morphologically distinct and those gametes are known as heterogametes 
Now, if those gametes are small in size, so most of it they are considered as male gametes, which are also known as antherozoid or sperms. And if the gametes are large in size, so mainly considered as female gametes, on the, those are known as egg cells or ovum. Now, when we consider sexual reproduction, so in sexual reproduction, these male gametes or female gametes are produced by either two different individual or by same individual and based on that first we have to discuss the sexuality in organism that means in plants and animals so let's start with sexuality in plant Now in plants, if the reproductive structures are present on the same plant body and that and those plants are considered as bisexual plants and if the reproductive structures are present on different individual and different plant, plant body then it is considered as unisexual plant. So here, if both reproductive structure Now both reproductive structures means the reproductive structure which are responsible for the formation of male gametes and female gametes. If both these reproductive structures are <coughs> present on same plant then that is known as bisexual plant. It is known as bisexual plant. But when we consider fungus or in some lower plants, okay, mainly this bisexual for bisexual plant, okay, the another terminology is used, okay. So in fungus and some other plants, this bisexual condition is termed as monoecious. or it is also termed as homothallic right because we know that the thallic word okay that is thallus is represent the simple plant body so if both the reproductive structures are present on same plant then that plant is known as bisexual plant but in fungus and plant that means in lower plant okay the other terminologies like monoecious or homothelic word is used okay to represent the bisexual condition now if both reproductive structures are present on different plant bodies that means not on the same plant body so if both reproductive structure are present on different plants okay then those plants are known as unisexual unisexual plant and in fungus and other lower plant this unisexual condition is represent or termed as dioecious or Heterothallic. Understood? So, when we consider sexuality in plant, that means which type of plants are reproduced bisexually, okay, are either produced both type of gametes by same plant body or they produce different gametes, okay, by different plant bodies. So, if both reproductive structures are on the same plant, that means they produce both type of gametes, then those plants are known as bisexual plant and the other terms which are used okay to represent bisexual condition are monoecious and homothallic similarly if both reproductive structures are present on different plants that means here the single plant is re is responsible for the production or for the formation of only single type of gamete then those plants are considered as unisexual plant and the other terms okay which represent unisexual conditions are dioecious or heterothallic now when we consider here 
these are the example of fungus and plant that means the lower plants but when we consider the higher plants like in angiosperm okay the mainly the reproductive organ is flower and we already know that the flower has four basic cycles okay first one is calyx second one is corolla the third one is stamen and the fourth one is carpel or pistil now mainly carpel and pistil okay are the main reproductive structure okay of flower right so based on that the flower okay are either unisexual flower or bisexual flower so we have to discuss okay these types of flower here based on on the presence of of reproductive structure the flowers flowers are of two types the flowers are of two type okay either flower is bisexual or the flower is unisexual right now when we consider this reproductive structure so male reproductive structure is known as stamen and the female reproductive structure is represented by pistil or carpel so here if this both structure that is stamen and carpel are both present okay and same flower then those flowers are known as bisexual flower that means here we can say that stamens and carpel or we can say pistils are both present in same flower okay then that flower is known as bisexual flower but when we consider unisexual that means either stamen or pistil either stamen or pistil are present okay in a flower then that is known as unisexual flower that means here either stamen or pistils are present in a flower then that is known as unisexual flower that means here either stamen yani ki flower mein either only stamens hoge ya to sirf pistil hoge so based on that we can say that unisexual flower are again classified into two types now if flower only bear stamen that means the male reproductive structure then that flower is considered as male flower male flower and male flower that means here male reproductive part okay represent by stamen and therefore that flower is also known as staminate staminate flower okay then we see here this flower bearing stamens that is male reproductive structure but if the unisexual flower only bears female reproductive structure that is pistil then that flower is considered as female flower female flower and because the female reproductive structure is represented by pistil that flower is also known as pistillate flower which one pistillate flower okay that means this type of flower bearing only pistils understood okay so based on the presence of reproductive structure on flower the flower are classified in two categories bisexual flower and unisexual flower bisexual flowers means stamen and pistils both are present in same flower and therefore it is known as bisexual flower but if either stamen or pistil are present in same flower then they are considered as unisexual flower now if this flower bearing only male reproductive structure that is stamen then that flower is considered as male flower or staminate flower but if the flower consists of bearing only female reproductive structure that is pistil or carpel then that flower is considered as female flower or pistillate flower now here if we consider here the male flower okay or we represent this male flower as yellow in color and the female flower as orange in color so here 
two possibilities are there either when we consider the whole plant so either plant okay possess both type of flower on the same plant body or the plant body okay bears either only male flower or female flower that means here see if we consider that is one plant and this plant okay bears only male flower right similarly consider another example where the plant body <coughs> plant body only bears the female flower so here in this type of plant okay see here this plant bears only male flower and this plant bears only female flower so such plant is known as dioecious dioecious plant understood okay because the dioecious represent the unisexuality that means here the male here the, this plant bears only one type of male flower and this plant only bears a one type of female flower and therefore such plants are known as dioecious plant and the example of this dioecious plant are papaya and that palm that palm but now if consider the one plant and on this plant okay both type of that is the female flowers as well as male flowers are present that means this plant bears male flower as well as female flower then that plant is known as monoecious monoecious plant understood that means here the plant bears both type of flower that means the male and reproductive male and female reproductive parts both are present on the same plant and therefore that is known as monoecious plant and the example of monoecious plant are cucurbita or cucurbits and coconut coconuts understood so based on the unisexual flower okay present okay in plant the plants are considered as dioecious and monoecious so dioecious plants means the plant bears only okay either of male flower or female flower but when we consider monoecious plant so monoecious plant means here male and female both flowers okay are present on the same plant and therefore it is known as monoecious plant so the one question arises if the plant bears bisexual flower so if the plant <coughs> bears okay bisexual flower then it is also known as monoecious plant why because here the bisexual condition means both type of gametes are produced by same plant body and if the bisexual flower okay on present in one plant okay then that is known as monoecious plant so that is the first sexuality in plants now we have to consider the sexuality in animals now we move on sexuality in animals now similar as plant in animal also the same individual is responsible for the formation of both type of gametes and those individuals okay which are responsible or capable for producing both type of gametes those animals or those individuals are known as bisexual animals and the another word which is also used okay to represent the bisexual animal is hermaphrodites so here we can say that if the animal okay consist consist both reproductive organ both reproductive organs okay then those animals okay are considered as bisexual animal right which are another terminology is hermaphrodites are also considered as hermaphrodites and the example of this bisexual animal the examples okay are earthworm Okay, then flatworms and leech. 
these are the example of bisexual animal but if the animals okay consist only one reproductive organ or one type of reproductive organ then those animals are known as unisexual animals so animals okay which consist of bearing okay only one type of reproductive organ that is either male reproductive organ or female reproductive organ then those animals okay are known as unisexual animals and the example okay the human being itself humans okay you already discussed in 11th standard okay that is frogs are also unisexual animal similarly cockroach cockroaches okay are also unisexual animals right so here it is simple that if the animal consists both reproductive organs that means the animals are capable for producing of both type of gametes and those are known as bisexual animals the other terminologies which represent the bisexual condition in animal is hermaphrodites the example okay earthworm flatworms leech etc now if the animals okay consist only one type of reproductive organ that is either male reproductive organ or female reproductive organ then those animals are considered as unisexual animals and the examples are human being itself frogs and cockroaches right now if we consider the organism based on their genetic material that means based on the number of chromosome then the some organisms are haploid in nature while the some organism are diploid in nature now haploid organism means the all cells of the body okay bears only the half set of chromosome and those organisms are known as haploid organism while the diploid organism means the cells okay or the mainly body cells okay bears the complete set of chromosome so now if the cell okay either haploid or diploid okay how they produce the haploid gametes because we know that the gametes are haploid cells so based on that okay we have to study that how these gametes that is haploid gametes are produced by either haploid cells or diploid cell and mainly it achieved okay by the cell division that means now we have to discuss the role of cell division okay for the gametogenesis okay, so let's start with cell division during gamete formation or we can say gametogenesis so cell division during gamete formation so here we have to mainly take the haploid cells and diploid cells okay which are responsible for the formation of gametes so when we consider the some lower organism or lower plants like in monera that means mainly represent bacteria okay then lower plants like thallophyte which includes algae the other fungus then <coughs> bryophyte so mainly here we can say that in monera in fungus then in algae and mainly in lower plants okay that means in bryophytes these organisms okay mainly the plant body okay represent by haploid condition so now these haploid cells okay mainly undergo which division mitotic division mitotic division that is the equational division okay for the production of okay the haploid gametes for the haploid gametes understood that means mainly in monera fungus algae and bryophytes so most of the organism okay or mainly the plant body okay are haploid in nature that means all the cells are haploid in nature now this haploid cell undergo mitotic division which is also known as equational division for the formation of haploid or <coughs> sorry haploid gametes now here so one question arises that means in this organism okay the meiotic division never takes place but yes here the meiotic division takes place because when the zygote formation takes place that means after the fertilization two haploid gametes join and form the diploid 
zygote. Now this diploid zygote okay directly undergo meiotic division for the again formation of the haploid cell. That means in this type of organism okay most of in algae bryophytes okay the meiotic division occurs okay after the formation of zygote to reform okay the haploid plant body. But when we consider the <coughs> organism okay which consists the diploid cells okay like in pteridophytes. In pteridophytes, then in gymnosperm, that means in higher plants, okay, gymnosperm, in angiosperm, and in most of animals, most of animals, okay, their body, okay, is diploid, means diploid body is there. Okay, that means here the cells okay possess the complete set of chromosome. So here in this diploid body, the some cells are specific which are responsible for the synthesis or for the formation of gametes, and those cells are considered or known as mother gamete cell, or it is also known as meiocytes. So that means here in this diploid body, some specific gamete mother cells. gamete mother cells are there okay which are also known as meiocytes meiocytes okay and these meiocytes okay are always obviously diploid in nature that means they are diploid cells now these gamete mother cells or meiocytes okay undergo which division meiotic division that is reductional division for the formation of gametes so meiotic division and due to the meiotic division or, uh, <coughs> and reductional division, okay, they produce okay the haploid haploid gametes. Right? That means if we compare the gamete mother cell or meiocytes, okay, they are diploid in nature. That means it consists the complete set of chromosome. But due to the meiotic or the reductional division, the resulting haploid cells or haploid gametes, okay, possess only the half set of chromosome only one of the se one set of the chromosome and therefore they represent by n now in ncrt textbook the some examples okay of this type of diploid organisms are given where the number of chromosomes are given okay for the meiocyte and we have to find out the number of chromosome for the haploid gametes for example if we write down here the meiocytes Okay, that means the chromosome present in meiocyte which we present by 2n and here consider the gametes which we present by n. Here take the first example that is human and we all know that in human, okay, mainly in somatic cell, okay, that means in diploid cell the number of chromosomes are 46. That is a meiocyte, okay, possess 46 chromosome and due to the meiotic or reductional division, the gametes bear only half set of chromosome, that is 23 chromosomes. Similarly, if we take the example of house fly, so in house fly, in meiocytes, okay, the 12 chromosomes are present and therefore in gametes, okay, it only possess 6 chromosomes. Similarly, in fruit fly, you already discussed, okay, or studied this fruit fly that is Drosophila melanogaster. Okay, it consists only eight chromosomes in meiocyte. That means in diploid cell, only eight chromosomes are present, and therefore the gametes bears, okay, only four chromosomes. And if we take the one example of plant that is maize, so maize, okay, in maize, the meiocyte, okay, bears 20 chromosome possess 20 chromosomes and therefore the gametes possess only half set that is 10 chromosomes and NCRT textbook many examples are given okay but here we only take the four example to understand okay how can we calculate the number of chromosome okay in meiocyte and gametes so that is the first event gametogenesis in pre-fertilization process